the climax of Jujutsu Kaisen is finally here. We just got the spoilers for chapter 267, we get the return of one of the most beloved characters in all of Jujutsu Kaisen, and then we get the literal ending to the fight between Yuji and Sukuna. Like, the fight is over at the end of this chapter, and it's straight up stated by the editor. So let's just get right into it. The chapter begins with Yuta and Gojo discussing while doing their body swap training. Yuta asks Gojo to give him the final Sukuna finger so that he can make Rika eat it and copy Sukuna's shrine technique, but Gojo declines. And just a little clarification, Gojo is actually in Yuta's body here as they're talking, but they go on. Gojo says that even though the final Sukuna finger can fulfill Yuta's copy curse technique requirement, it's still not good enough to analyze shrine's curse technique info. Yuta agrees because even with her speech, he still needed Inumaki's input on how to use it. So this late in the game, we're still getting details about Yuta's curse technique, and we get even more information about it in this chapter, but first, Gojo says, I don't think it's a very smart decision to lose our connection with Sukuna, and Yuta's confused. Gojo goes on to say, it's a gamble. If I say it like Hikari, it's the heat. And we're going to see the gamble that he's talking about later, but first, Yuta says that the requirement to copy a curse technique is to make Rika consume a part of the subject's body. The quantity and what part of the body part that needs to be consumed depends on the subject he's copying, and the number of times he'll use the technique. Yuta goes on to say, You can think of it as if I want to copy a strong curse technique, I need to take in a part of a jujitsu sorcerer's body that is pretty fatal to them, but even if it's a fatal part of the body, I can fulfill the technique's requirements by using a binding vowel to limit the use. Yuta continues to say that when the subject regenerates the body part with RCT, which Rika ate, then from that point on the body part which Rika ate will become useless and he can't fulfill Kapi's curse technique requirements. Yuta adds that he used Inumaki in Hana's arms because it was determined that they couldn't heal their arms anymore using RCT and modern science. Also, Yuta took a part of Charles' ribcage to copy his curse technique, and in a small panel, Hakari assures Charles that he will be healed later, which is actually pretty funny. But anyway, all of this goes to say that the more vital the body part that Rika took from the Jujutsu Sorcerer, the better connection with the technique that Yuta is going to have. So for example, if Rika eats a sorcerer's fingernail, that's a pretty weak connection to the technique. But if she eats like their liver or something, which is like necessary to being alive, right? Then Yuta gets a much stronger connection to the technique and can use it more easily and more frequently. But moving on, May asks if Yuta is informed about Yuji and Sukuna's resonance from Toto. Yuta says he knows about it, and that's why they're going to execute this plan right before they fight Sukuna, and they'll only inform Yuji on the bare minimum. Not gonna lie, I was a little confused by this section here. If one of you guys wants to clarify on it in the comments, then by all means go ahead and do it. But the important thing to take away from here is that Yuji is completely oblivious to the secret plan that's about to come up in a second. Like he was as shocked as we were to see what happens. Yuta then says to Yuji, even though you can't use it now, your body is already engraved with Sukuna's curse technique. There's no doubt about it since Gojo Sensei already confirmed it with his six eyes. And why that's important is because it explains why Yuji is missing another finger, and as we cut back to the present, Sukuna notices that Yuji is missing one more finger other than the one that he tore off to transfer himself to Megumi, and then he realizes that Yuta bluffed him. He realizes that Yuta used Yuji's finger to copy shrine technique. So yeah, that explains it for us right there. The reason why it was important to bring up in that flashback that Yuta already knew that shrine was engraved in Yuji's body is so that they can pull this trick here. Well, we then move on to the location we saw at the end of the previous chapter, where we saw that the final Sukuna finger was hanging. Utahime and Gaku Ganji are present at the place where Sukuna's final finger is sealed. Gaku asks if Sukuna's finger, a special grade cursed object, which can withstand any physical or jujitsu processing, can be penetrated by that technique. Utahime says through a binding vow whereby removing the objective of destroying the cursed object and focusing solely on applying the technique's effect, maybe she can pull it off. But Utahime is concerned that it's only been a short time since she has woken up. And I already know that a ton of you already know exactly who this is. This quote unquote she that they're referring to, it's freaking Nobara. That is right, we cut to Nobara saying rejoice boys, and she's wearing an eye patch because of course she got her eye blown out the last time we saw her. Now I just want to take a moment right here to say that I have been a passenger of the Nobara is alive train for a very very long time now. Literally since the moment that she was presumably dead, I have been pounding the table saying that she is still alive 
alive, she's going to come back at a crucial moment and do exactly what she's doing right here, using her resonance technique to take out one of Sukuna's fingers, or really not take it out, but use it, in order to do some heavy damage on Sukuna at the perfect moment. Look, I've been on YouTube for a while and come up with tons and tons of theories in various manga and anime, so finally being right on a prediction, I'm going to take my victory laps when I can. Definitely, definitely taking one here. Those of you that were coping for Nobara's return for as long as I have been, definitely let me know in the comments, let your voices be heard, and take your own little victory lap just like me. It's alright, you deserve it. Anyway, Nobara uses resonance on Sukuna's final finger. Then, Sukuna's whole body convulses. As he's hit by Nobara's resonance, Sukuna realizes it's Nobara curse technique and starts freaking out. This is that woman's, this is bad, my curse technique. I can't open my domain. At this rate, the kid's sure hit effect will. And before we move on, let me just say that I am so happy and like so satisfied to see Sukuna freaking out here. Because like the entirety of JJK, he's just been like calm, cool, collected, and always had a plan for everything. This is how you know that he's like done. Moving on though, Yuji is in tears as he realizes that Nobra is still alive. And we see Nobra addressing Yuji as she says, How's that for Opapi, you idiot? And that's actually referring to the moment that Yuji revealed that he was alive when everyone thought that he was dead like way, way back at the beginning of the series. He also says Opapi, so I thought that was a pretty funny callback for Nobra. And just such a perfect line. Well, Sukuna is hurting now, but Yuji doesn't give Sukuna time to recover, and instantly hits him with his soul dismantle. Yuji knees Sukuna right in the face, and punches him really hard, which makes Sukuna throw up. But Sukuna hasn't given up yet as he punches back at Yuji. Sukuna then says, Did you really think that you could peel me off with your makeshift domain? Sukuna thinks that Yuji has surpassed his limits, and he's not even healing his own injuries with RCT. And since domain expansion consumes a lot of cursed energy, it must be over for Yuji. But then Sukuna is confused as Yuji hits him with his special delayed second impact punch, which I'm assuming means his divergent punch. And then Yuji drops one of the coldest lines of 2024 because Yuji locks in and with a cold face he says, let's put an end to this ever cycling curse Sukuna. And then Yuji hits Sukuna with a black flash. After this, the editor's comment comes saying the end of a long battle and there's no break next week. So there we go, we're pretty much hearing it from the man himself. This is the end of the fight, like, whatever results from this punch, it's gonna be Sukuna being defeated. But like, the crazy thing is that there's just so many unanswered questions, like, I don't know how Gege is going to kind of wrap everything up, wrap this entire fight up, all in pretty much the next chapter, but look, I'm just super excited to be getting this chapter, I'm so happy that Nobra's back, and I don't know man, I'm a, I'm a pretty, pretty happy fan right now. Definitely a very satisfying chapter, but I very, very very much want to know what you guys think about this chapter in the comments below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? How do you feel about Nobra being freaking back? Give me all those thoughts in the comments. That is it for this one though. Have an absolutely wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whatever, and I'll see you guys in the next video.